Hello all, good evening everyone. So welcome to this, our first not start knowledge session. Like technically not, but yes, officially we we do start from today. And, and basically the aim is to spread our knowledge, right? Spread the awareness of the tech stack that we do work on. And, and saying that it's also one of our core pillars, right? And, and one of our core principles and values of our Go 1%. So, so then let me introduce like uh, our first presenter, Yasser, our technical architect. Uh, proficient in microservices, reactive architecture, uh, with the touch of cloud native solution. So Yasser, uh, over to you. Uh, uh, let me know like if I didn't introduce you well. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot for the introduction. Yes, so it would be my very first knowledge session as well. And we are looking forward to have a healthy participation from you all. So I guess we can start now. Mm -hmm. Right. So. This one, I just picked a topic because I see it's kind of some hype getting created over it. I was reading about it. So it's just we're going to talk about metaverse. Like, it, could it be the best thing after the internet? And <clears throat> yeah, like where we stand right now, all that. So first, we'll quickly talk about the eti etiquettes of knowledge. So we'll be punctual. Uh, constructive feedback is welcome. It helps me as a presenter get better keep your devices on silent mode if you need to move out you can't yeah, for taking anything urgent and yeah avoid any disturbance any side talks or chit -chat, chit chat so today's agenda what we are going to talk about is a little bit about metaverse how what is it ex exactly what shapes metaverse what are the technologies that is aiding metaverse or bringing it to the future who are the major pl players who have already dipped their hands into it and where we currently stand and then we'll briefly talk about the future the trends and as a technology company like do we buy in right now or we, we kind of wait so metaverse i think it's more like a concept i believe we already are somehow used to this by watching sci-fi movies like matrix or steven spielberg's ready player one where a person just uses a head mounted display and goes into a virtual reality which is a different world of its own so this is pretty much what metaverse is trying to make real where it combines our real world and digital world together as seamlessly as possible and of course, there are a lot of nuances around it, like how it will happen, when it will happen, and if it will happen. So it could be the, the reason why I was comparing it with internet was when it started, people were really speculative about it. There was yeah discussion that like not all can use this technology, but look at <clears throat> today, like we can't live without internet. So metaverse could be something like that in maybe a decade or two so this one uh, the the term was coined by neil stephenson in 1992 novel snow crash so yeah like a visionary he is actually an engineer working for jeff bezos blue origin as an like i think an analyst or a, some type of <coughs> like in a, some kind of a consulting role but yeah so he spoke about metaverse like what he envisioned it to be very, very similar to what now people are using the term so it especially it it's so it is a mix of multiple realities like virtual reality and augmented reality together so it giving an immersive experience where you as a physical form can interact with multiple virtual worlds so you can have that experience the virtual experience move around different e <coughs> experiences and at the same time seamlessly take your assets with you like digital objects like for example you have digital clothes digital cars those also you can move around you can have your own digital currencies nfts so that is where metaverse is trying to go to to even get into a digital economy where our lot of our in interaction in future can happen and it is all supported by persistent virtual worlds which will exist even if you are participating in it or not 
using virtual reality and augmented reality, which is a mix, which actually combines aspects of both digital world and physical world. And the idealistic version of metaverse is proposed to be interoperable. So no big player owns a space. So you can easily move from one platform to another. That uh, might be a long shot, but what is currently there is that you do have platforms where you can actually move around with your digital self. But if you have to move out of that platform, you do need to have things like blockchain where you can take your digital uh, self or <coughs> out and then probably do another interaction with a new platform. But yeah, that is what it is right now. And the envision is that, okay, it becomes interoperable at some point. Uh, so yes, when we say that we can move from one platform to another, what? So so are we saying that there are multiple such metaverse platforms and currently there are, are yeah. So for example, Facebook has started building their own metaverse. Then we have a mix up of metaverse from a lot of gaming companies like Epic Games, Roblox. Then there's a metaverse called Decentraland. So there there are a lot of companies who have already started establishing metaverses or their mm. own virtual space, which they are trying to shape into a metaverse. Mm. So I remember that a long time back, at least, you know, like uh, when I was probably younger, like you guys, there, there was some, something called Second Life and that became very popular. Yeah, you know, like yeah, Second yeah. Life. Was... Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, yeah, it, it, it also features in when you search about metaverse. Yeah. This kind of inspiration to metaverse too, Second Life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, so, so Second Life was, uh, um, it was, it was popular, and it was you know like uh, probably one of those platforms where you know like uh, people just you know like went in to have a Second Life that you know like mm -hmm. I am this in that uh, digital avatar, world, that digital avatar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, yeah. now when there are multiple metaverses, so you know like when they say that you can buy a property or as you said clothes and cars, so on one particular platform, but then there are others on which you go ahead and do the same thing. So. Uh, you know, like if a person has to spend money and create wealth, you know, like, uh, so he, he picks up one platform and does that. Is that the concept? Uh, that is uh, what, yeah, the experts don't want to want to yeah. happen. And that's probably what meta or companies like want to happen that, okay, their metaverse becomes the one where everyone go, comes and interact with. But yeah, the ideal version is that you should not, you if you have a digital asset that you can easily carry over to a different metaverse and an example is clothes and nike is nike and a lot of luxury retailers are kind of investing in it like l'oreal is doing that lvmh is doing that nike has bought a few vr startups as well so what they want is that they want to create uh, assets or objects in the virtual world which will be tied to your digital persona or maybe your unique identity using blockchain mm -hmm. then if you do move around from for example decentraland to fortnite you should be able to take it along with you so it, it will be your property or throughout okay so all these uh, like l'oreal's and others uh, like like you said uh, uh, louis vuitton and others mm -hmm. so you just buy a digital kind of uh, object from them or yes. You yes. buy the physical and then you get the digital. It will be the digital version. So you will have a, your own digital designer clothes sh or shoes. So yes, yeah, so it, it, yeah, so it's kind of like a copyright thing also that they are trying to figure out how to make it le like keep the legal aspect. So you cannot build your own avatars with uh, which from, from products of uh, like some of these big MNCs. <coughs> mm -hmm. like, so if you want to have a Nike shoe, you have to pay them in some digital currency of their own or maybe a common currency. Okay. Yeah. So that is an interesting concept. Actually. Yeah. yeah. So let's see how that shapes up. But I know within games you can do or like within these smaller games or the things like Roblox, it's a, it's a, I think it's a game for kids. I haven't actually experienced it, but I have just through my research, I found a lot of videos around it where you can have their their own digital currency you can buy things you can trade actually in the assets too and even metaverse gives you that opportunity that you can so already we, the, the nfts are being traded there there are digital art art that is getting traded even even right now so metaverse will give you that opportunity that a lot of people can go and actually experience that asset and then you can have um, maybe biddings or 
traits. Hmm. Hmm. So, and then yeah, these are these are some of the opportunities that are more feasible in near future. Like the, our con- communication will enhance like expensively. So just imagine like you we are doing some online shopping and at the same time attending a conference in another part of the world all while just wearing a headset and sitting on in your home or office so you actually get the experience so for example during the pandemic we were all shut down into our houses but we had to do all these activities buying things so we had to do it online and at least i did never liked it i never had i don't never liked the experience of just browsing through an app and selecting things and then experiencing it or maybe end up returning a lot of stuff with uh, virtual reality with augmented reality it is possible that yeah you your one of your your digital persona can get into a room where you can actually experience feel stuff and then do that shopping for you so a little better than online shopping yeah it's definitely not the real thing but yes then it helps you be in multiple places at once Okay, so I'm so so it's starting to sound almost like they're trying to create like a virtual version of reality, like a massive simulator. Yeah. Just, um, so they're they're trying. So it, it's just kind of interesting because it's it's I'm not. It sounds at the same time that some of them want to make it kind of as realistic as possible, but other other ones want to make it more more of kind of a virtual. Like I don't know if you've ever seen the movie. Uh, I think it's um, like Johnny Runner or something like that. He he's like a he's like a it's like a movie from the '90s, but they they have a virtual thing, but it's like a mm-hmm. a, a HUD that pops up, and you can like move things with your hands, and mm-hmm. you like click on symbols, and it takes you to a different place. Mm-hmm. But it, it's it's less like an interface, and more like you're a person walking around in virtual reality is what they're trying to do. So. So if I just like to go grocery shopping, I'd look on like virtual shelves as I virtually walk around a grocery store, taking things off a shelf and putting it in my virtual shopping cart. Sort true, of thing. True. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, that is there. And you, in fact, I think it's already there in some of the platforms. Oh, you can okay. move around, you can put, pick an apple and then you can put it in your grocery cart and it automatically gets added to your cart. So once you check out area yeah, and then you can ship it to your own. Weird. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, it is. I I don't know. I don't know how true that experience is going to be. You know, like uh, yeah, yeah. I'm. Uh, so yeah. So like I said, like it, this, right now. Yeah. This one is uh, dependent on a lot of technologies to emerge at the same time, and mm. with Internet of Things, five G, edge computing, AI, all of. Yeah. If you talk about those two, like mm. so. So this, this yeah, this is kind of a concept that only is possible with all these things working in tandem and mm-hmm. it is serious because you, if you see facebook just rebranded themselves as meta and mm-hmm. they have been in the news yeah some negative news lately but still they have the optimism to continue with this metaverse and there's they have the headset call i think quest quest 2 and then other companies have also started bringing up their vr headsets even mm-hmm. apple is supposed to launch something this year Let's see how that goes. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so and then the, this immersive sales and marketing. So you, with the use of spatial computing and augmented reality, it is possible that uh, a deal, car dealership does not have to have all the models available. They can even like w- get you into some kind of a metaverse of their own, where you can just see different uh, options in, in t- different interiors, how it will look. Maybe you will not be able to experience the driving, but at least the feel, touch and feel of it. Then, like a lot of our customers are into retail industry, and this is gonna, <clears throat> if it becomes a thing, it will definitely hit the retail industry pretty big. Very similar to what happened in COVID, where there were a lot of companies who were not that much into e commerce. They had to just quickly do something to get it to there, have that digital transformation. But yeah, they never reap the benefits out of it because they were too late. So there is a possibility that if it happens, yeah, we may be able to aid our clients, maybe telling them, okay, is it is this thing for you or not? Then yeah, like I said, you can buy sell digital assets, artworks, virtual land. Like for example, the I saw there was one article where Snoop Dogg had bought some sandbox, some some land somewhere, and the 
real estate around that area was just being sold for like 500k or more using digital currency so the pe- people are serious serious about it <laughs> yeah so i'm not sure like what we're going to do with that virtual real estate but yeah yeah, yeah it's, yeah, it's amazing yeah. <laughs> and then yes for education meetings we can have virtual spaces and, and yasser is this digital currency still crypto or it has other forms also it will use blockchain yes it, it will, will use blockchain. blockchain yeah yeah and it may be different type of currencies and not just one currency because i think every mm-hmm. metaverse vendor will try to push their own currency so they they may have some control over the the digital economy happening in their area but yes mm-hmm. possible with nfts and blockchain only when do you think they'll have something that um is uh what is it called the the stamp the stamp to connect all the different uh virtual realities together like uh, html i think is what they call it like um uh in terms of internet it's html but in the digital world they're they're still trying to con- uh, come up with a standard aren't they oh yeah that may happen quite late because there is no governance around it right now very few players are there so like i said the big players do not want that but eventually that is the only way metaverse is possible like they you do you cannot buy into one platform to be available or experience metaverse so mm-hmm. but right now there are no governance no standards but i got a lot of companies are trying to see how that will work that interoperability and i think people realize that okay without it it will not pick up or be like it will not expand or, or beat internet for example okay so and then yes so inter- entertainment it's already there the virtual reality is already there it can get extended into gaming where you can actually experience the game and just not play around it. play then you can have virtual concerts where you can <coughs> experience the music as well as the vibe just like attending a concert and most of it is about the experience where you your physical self is able to interact with that digital <coughs> like digital what you say your environment or that whole universe of its own where which half of it would be digital half of it would be mix of augmented reality where some of the things it will use based on the physical characteristics like the physical objects and some of it would be digital then yes. this- so things like uh, say like immersive sales and marketing uh, so for this we'll have to be in that metaverse right to experience that so if i'm mm-hmm. so i'm not there i don't see that right so what do yeah. you understand is that you're like you need to be a part of uh, that whatever decentralized land or you're like the things that you were talking about that is correct yeah yeah, yeah. Is- yeah. So, same as the internet you have to have a website only then somebody will come to you fair enough fair enough. yeah 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 i see a lot of you know like uh, strong reasons to have something like that in the health and safety arena uh, say for example i don't know whether the flight simulator or where the pilots actually train is that is that do 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 we call that metaverse or not you're like it's that it's, is it's, yeah, that's more that. simulated but uh next level would be hazardous training or like bomb diffusers or uh, maybe training the fire marshals those things can be done through metaverses where you like they have the environment of a forest fire and you actually go and train and see like how you can <coughs> handle it without actually getting trained with the actual fire that kind of thing so yeah. it's not simulated it is somewhere where you can act- you do interact and you will have certain physical aspects so as well as the digital aspect where you probably you'd move around things you, like you can you can use your hose to that that kind of stuff or mm-hmm. like dealing with any hazardous waste for example nuclear waste like so th- that again would be you go into a virtual environment where you are dealing with it but yeah if you make a mistake at least it will not be catastrophic mm mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Although they already they already do have simulators for most of those yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I it seems to me like the only real difference between necessarily a, a, a simulator and uh, this metaverse is that this uh, metaverse is 
kind of an integration of multiple simulators, or it's trying to some way have a more immersive experience than just a plain simulator. Yeah, it's the latter, yes. Yeah. So it's more immersive, and more experience. It has those haptic feedbacks where you kind of do, you can sense things. So it's not like, okay, like you, you're just watching a video and you, maybe you have some controls over it, but you know that you, you are outside that system. Like if you talk about a flight simulator, this is what it is. You, you never feel that you're actually <coughs> flying a plane. But well, yeah, you can, so that that is where it differs a little and give you that experience and maybe uh, some, sometimes uh, that actually triggers a different uh, sort of emotion like your, what you, what you call it, like uh, how will you handle such a situation? Maybe if I know it's a uh, simulated environment, I just have to play around with some joysticks. I will not be that scared, but if my mind is all into it and I can actually have that feeling around that, okay, I am in a very different environment and then then maybe my fear may come out or the way I interact would be very different. So that is something which, and that's, that's also been done even with the virtual reality or even they call it mixed reality where you, you have something virtual and some of it is augmented or another term that being used is extended reality. That's the, so it's already been there. So this this is anyway evolving in parallel, and that's how metaverse expects that something it will converge to a point where metaverse is possible uh, to be available across like general population, for example. So maybe yeah, I can we can talk about the technologies which I've been just throwing around. So it, yeah, to give you more ideas. So. So these are the key technologies which experts believe are helping shape metaverse. So Web3 is again a concept where we're talking about decentralized identity where a user has total control of their privacy, their own data, they can take it wherever they are going. So that is something which metaverse will definitely <coughs> use where this is the biggest problem right now with the internet, with anything where you, wherever the privacy, user privacy is involved. So if that gets decentralized, you have control over what you want to share. Again, if there are a handful of players, then they may have their own conditions. Like for example, I think Facebook had that condition where you have to have a Facebook account only then you can use their metaverse. I, I, I guess now they're just planning to get take it out. But yeah, those are the things that yeah, I, as a user, I wouldn't want. Like I wouldn't want to share my details. I don't, I don't want to go into a metaverse where I'm talking to my colleague, talking about buying a new car and suddenly everywhere I go, I just see advertisements of a car or I, if I book an Uber, I get the same car that I'm planning to buy. So yeah, I wouldn't want that. So with this concept of decentralized identity, that is possible that you, you have control over your own identity. And that is again possible through blockchain technology. So I, any other f further advanced enhancement in blockchain is going to aid Web3 that eventually can update me help Metaverse. Then like I was talking about what extended reality, which is a concept between, it's a combination of virtual reality with, with everything is virtual. You, like, like what we see in games and some of those sci-fi movies where you have like your digital avatar interacts completely in a digital world. You you just sit around and you you do experience it, but you don't actually interact physically. Then you have augmented reality where, which is being currently being used in a lot of heavy industries where a user or a machine would have that similar kind of head mounted display, but they would have some additional <coughs> equipments on top on, on a body where you so it helps you with that interaction where you move around your hand, you can experience things, you can even, you will have some kind of haptic feedback some for your auditory senses and then for different type of impairments like hearing impaired, impaired or vision, vision impaired, there are more devices to welcome those people also into the same uh, place where they can experience extended reality. So that's where a lot of advancements are going on. A lot of companies have invested, are investing. They're 
a lot of startups there and it just just by reading through i i saw that I, even like within Jan- january itself there have been multiple series round for different companies where they have <coughs> like uh, like got this funding to invest in virtual world xr ar all that then another concept that has been around for a while is spatial computing that it's a, it's a complex thing in its own but yeah that is also helping with the help of ai now machines can interact with your 3d self of your physical world uh, we see that even in like self driving cars or i ikea started something where you can have you can have the ikea app and you can uh, f- put it to one part of your room and just select the furniture and how that will look like so that also uses some part of spatial computing so that again helps metaverse then iot internet of things and 5g that helps you bring that speed it uh, reduces the latency and uh, in in the next decade i'm pretty sure we will be, we'll have <coughs> better technology than 5g too so all that is required if you're, want, you're trying to connect to a virtual world from any place in the world then edge computing Uh, because now we don't want all the computing happen on a particular cloud so we so any advancement in that helps that okay your devices are the ones who are taking care of the data and the computing that again helps reduces latency helps uh, like improves your bandwidth so you can do multiple operations then ai on its own yeah, the the more it advances the more we uh, improve on spatial computing part or another concept that <coughs> we're talking about is digital twins so this is also uh, been there for a while where you have a real time digital identity identity of a resource or a person like you can have identity of your own so using advanced ai it can predict uh, how this uh, digital twin will interact based on uh, certain feedbacks then you have digital twins of infrastructure like highways and automobiles those also so if once you have those digital twins that interaction between a digital self or digital twin of a person or a customer is possible so like yeah, these are some of the technologies and yeah they have they are a topic on its own and yeah very quickly if you want to talk about like virtual reality is where you have to- completely digital interactions sorry okay and then augmented reality where is a combination of digital and physical worlds with real time interactions web3 is where we have the decentralized identity and user has control over the data digital twins is like i said it's a real time digital copy of a resource or a person and all driven by ai spatial computing then edge computing it does <coughs> any advancement in that is helping minimize the lit- network latency storage of data then nft blockchain helps interoperating digital goods across multiple metaverses because then it has a u- so it blockchain gives you a unique identity of an asset so that is something which you can share across multiple platforms and ai is kind of central in all all of this so yeah any advancement any advancement in nlp speech recognition so that would help in the interaction a user has with the virtual world so yeah and then i will talk about so there are there have been a lot of investments like i said there are some big players especially during the uh, time after or the pandemic that investment has exponentially risen so some of the key players which currently exist there epic games so if some if people are aware they are, they have a very popular game called fortnite so it gives you that virtual experience and they have been raising billions of dollars for their metaverse ambition and they already have a user base they already have their own digital currency so some many of their games are free but if you look at the at their revenues they are like <clears throat> bringing in millions of dollars 
through their the all the digital economy they have within the games where a uh, user goes and buys stuff or uh, buys credits to watch some kind of a battle or uh, get a better digital avatar then facebook they even rebranded themselves as meta so this shows how serious they are they and they, they are putting in tons of money i would say and tons of research they bought this head mounted display vr uh, company called oculus i think long back now they rebranded as quest meta meta quest something and similarly there's another gaming platform called roblox they have seen explosive growth in fact a lot of uh, companies are branding their stuff in the roblox metaverse for example chipotle had a burrito contest <laughs> you can <laughs> you can where you can earn some burrito dollars or burrito currency for uh, for by performing some operation gucci had a, some kind of a gucci garden set up in roblox where you go you can buy some uh, very customized bags which then you can actually trade mm-hmm. off later on so again still tied to a single currency but ju- just show how the companies are showing interest and want to be part of this whole <coughs> trend which may or mo- may not be uh, tangible now maybe it will not return the gains they are expecting but yeah nobody wants to miss the train then microsoft recently they partnered with meta for more <coughs> researches on metaverse they even introduced their own one one of their metaverse called microsoft mesh they even bought a gaming company called activision i think last year hmm. then amazon amazon has launched a metaverse like game called quest or some i think quest amazon quest so it's more like i think they are just trying to get it a hold of like how metaverse work but they have been spending heavily in sp- special computing to imp- improve the customer experience how they buy things so they are like again <coughs> becoming a major player and they are improving their aw uh, aws infrastructure to have smaller players give the capability where they can launch their own platforms in aws cloud then interestingly jp morgan became the first leading bank to launch in a metaverse so i think they they launched in decentraland and as per them it could be a 1 trillion dollar economy within uh, within few years that's digital economy that is what jp morgan is predicting and they they are betting on it so these are some of the big players then uh, apple has been kind of <coughs> thinking about getting into hair so they are working on a vr vr ar kind of glasses so again like all under the wraps but it appear that it might be this year that they were going to reveal it so if that happened that would give the credibility that okay another major technology company is into uh, if not metaverse but the realm of virtual reality extended reality and a lot more will buy in for sure like even i i would probably buy a vr glasses from apple so so this is where yeah things are happening and this is what <clears throat> the technology trends talk about so thought works for example they are they are predicting that by next 5 6 years it is going to grow by 40% per year reaching a industry of 800 million dollars so through it, digital economy through social media and advertising so it will be a mix of both like not all the economy would be part of the metaverse but somehow related to metaverse then gartner trends they it is kind of a at the early adoption stage so they are also recommending that it is something where the as a technology company should not lose focus on but yeah don't like put all their bets in just this basket because just because right now it's very decentralized where there are few big players it is possible that some of them might not make it so mm-hmm. yeah for for now gartner says like be uh, they are optimistic but yeah <coughs> that more like it could be patient maybe for a couple of more years and see how that goes 
then pw had a research very recently last year where they contacted like around 500 to 1000 industry experts and they talked about metaverse like and their social impact uh, impact on economy impact on user behavior and out of it the eventual outcome was like 54% of the experts think that by by a decade or two like by 2040 it will be more refined more Im- re- immersive and it could be a part of your life or like a half a billion people or more then it is it is like trending in multiple technology trends if you talk about stack overflow we talk about i think info queue uh, in a few more trends so this like this is on the radar of a lot of technology companies so mm. that's why i like as a, a technology company like nolders who are always looking at a future ready technology something we may be interested in and what all these trends are talking about is that you may not end up like getting into a metaverse or end up uh, creating a killer app which will just propel you to become <coughs> or like the next angry birds for example but what it will help you is like because it it has those building blocks like you're talking about extended reality web3 nft digital twin so all of it are the pillars or the tenets of to make metaverse possible so if a technology company starts investing in that those technologies are being used so and uh, they are not going to go away so any research from a technology company that will not go to waste even if metaverse does not become a possibility maybe web3 becomes a possibility even web3 is a concept right now for example yeah but i think a lot of a lot of web3 is still blockchain based you know like that uh, that still seems uh, that still seems to be getting some business cases yeah i'm just yeah i'm just curious about you know like 800 billion dollars that's a huge number right Uh, so what are those uh, what are those business cases that eventually i get sales and marketing health and safety i i understood but for sales and marketing as well you know like uh, a lot of people need to be on that a lot of people need to be wearing those uh, so they are imagining that it that's will replace internet that's what they are mm-hmm. saying so even uh, the e-commerce may shift from the regular internet to web3 or a combination of web3 and metaverse so that again mm-hmm. contributes that that you know the 800 billion dollars so instead of buying things the way we are buying right now it is more like get into a shop you know like look around for things and pick yeah. them up as you find them and you may you may end up buying more at least this is what i fe- felt that buying online i end up returning like most of the things but if i go to a store and buy something i would probably keep it there are yeah, isn't isn't it still going to be still you know like you i don't know you uh, i know you said that uh, we'll be able to um uh, feel it you know like, i don't know how how do you feel it is still going to be a digital thing I, i might be able to pick it up with my digital of thought or something right it it does so that those are the those devices where you get those haptic feedbacks ah touch touches that that <clears throat> like especially if you're holding a grocery product for example okay so you will you will get that experience through the those feedback and through whatever head mounted display you have So yeah, it's all it's all about the experience. So your your senses are simulated digitally with the yeah, help. Sounds of, uh, sounds magical, yeah. But it'll be. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I I see that. Like even I thought that it's more like a concept. But I see uh, they like they have prototypes where you can experience and you can even buy like uh, for for example, Sony Sony PlayStation have a lot of uh, they have their VR goggles and a few more things where you you get some kind of a feedback. There are some movie theaters where So it's like a five D, seven D, eleven D, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I believe getting into retail and uh, like buying experience, uh, it is very far because I mean economically, it will not be feasible to ship uh, instruments to feel the texture of cloth you are buying to consumers, right? It will be economically <laughs> less possible, but still for learning and uh, simulation and other experience like gaming. i think it is more feasible and very near the uh, yeah, gaming is already there so maybe maybe that the the touch and all that we think of like for a fabric what kind of uh hardware that we would need maybe that 
becomes much cheaper or the, these companies who are in, investing in it they will make it cheaper so and it's just technology right so you, i wouldn't have imagined even we are possible where i wear goggles and i'm drifted into a different world and i have experienced it in if you go to some of the malls they have set up those shops we are shops so so it, it, yeah that itself i thought like it might not be possible but yeah it does play around with your brain that make you feel that you are in a different space altogether yeah okay okay yeah so yeah so these are some of the possibilities where <coughs> it is being stated to be in early adoption stage where it it will eventually mature into the early to late 2030s and the, it has a potential to replace at least a version of internet that we know of it could be just part of the the new internet of that era and like internet itself like it was conceptualized in 1980s but it took like 10 years for it to be accepted by the masses then we have the dot com boom in 2000s and look at it now where we are so like 40, <coughs> 40 years from that so it it takes a, it will take a while but that is something which is possible again with the advancement of technology advancement of you know, hardware and maybe laziness of people i would say so all that may contribute that okay yes it is possible and yeah covid covid has like like, like given the push that i i don't think any technology could have given like f- to these concept of metaverse where people started realizing that working remote is possible doing things remote may be required yeah we are not talking about a dystopian future where you can't even go out where <coughs> you have to wear masks and all but yes you, even if that happens then yeah you that is where you will start living your life in a metaverse and the the other thing that what the experts feel that okay and it's just like internet there were a few major players when it started but at, and then new players came in and now it's nobody controls the platform so this is something is being envisioned for metaverse also so although there are no governance no controls but the expectation is there could not be just one single player controlling the whole platform and plus users will have the control over their identity Mm-hmm. so yeah so this is my take that yet yeah, the technology is like i said which are shaping metaverse will keep enhancing and we should be worthy to have our interest from nolders or our technology company and some of it will have use cases in near future some of it will stay like a concept and may evolve much later but any early adoption does help us as a technology provider guide our clients and maybe tell them okay if they want to get into this hype or not because uh, right now a lot of retail companies do want just even just for the benefit of advertising some of the companies are doing it like like i said for chipotle for example they don't have any relationship with gaming virtual reality still they jumped in there was another uh, in, uh, incidents where taco bell i, I wasn't aware but they were they are quite famous for have, holding mexican type weddings so they did a similar wedding in a metaverse platform so just just to be to to be associated with the hype so that yeah <clears throat> they never lose out of the bandwagon or people can't associate them as a company who doesn't uh, is not aligned with the recent trends so so yeah so people are jumping in and like i said those like lot of luxury retailers and then there is another luxury retailer called house of blueberry they have been investing a lot so in virtual reality and assets so making designer assets in virtual reality and then uh, which is which is the platform on which uh, all of these companies are mostly targeted the facebook one is it very few target facebook for now so a lot of them are in decentraland which is very famous and some of it is across multiple gaming platform like fortnite and unreal and even activision yeah, now activision is i think part of uh, yeah is part of microsoft now then roblox uh, roblox i have i've seen that like they are more closer to metaverse so they don't have that kind of a 
graphical interface like you it will look like or even lego has a, a metaverse too i think decentraland or something else like lego has a metaverse too where you can have those lego pieces as your avatars but yes so any interaction you do the, so they can mimic that So yeah, this is where I am. Yes. So yeah, I think about time. Uh, so yeah, again, it's more of a concept. I don't have anything to demo. So, and when I started digging into it, I thought like it went in so so deep. <laughs> yeah, so many things to learn. But yeah, I think thanks thanks to this knowledge session, I I got to learn more about metaverse. Otherwise, I would have just read about it from the surface and moved on it. Yeah, yeah. No, I think the, uh, this is what at least it gives us some idea. Uh, so, eight hundred billion in uh, like whatever it was, uh, eight years or you know, like whatever this. Yeah, year. around that. Yeah. Where is it? Where is it now? What is what is it now? So now it is still a concept. So that's why there is no numbers. Mm -hmm. Now it's more about companies buying in or investing in. So that's what we have. Like all these big players spending how much. But there, there is no revenue, for example, from Meta or from Decentraland or Roblox. Yeah. yeah, yeah. See, the only parallels that I see so far with the, what we are doing is probably that we are working with some of our retail giants, and uh, uh, maybe they want to explore something in this uh, area, or uh, maybe you know, like, I don't know, you know, like uh, hospitality. Say, for example, we, what we do with Royal Caribbean. Uh, maybe they want to do something in uh, the metaverse area, but I, I don't know if we have seen any interest so far. And I'm just curious, you know, like uh, where does this intersect with some of the technology choices that we are making and we are uh, getting our clients with? So, yeah. So yeah, I don't see any of them in our radar, and they're all kind of towards AI, M even ML, like that part. And I, would, like at least from. What we have been discussing about our roadmap. Mm -hmm. right, so, so I think we we picked a very few topics from that particular domain. Yeah, because AR we are. Uh, I don't think. Yeah, AR we are. I think yeah, that is something where we, uh, more it's good for more product companies or you even gaming that kind of company for a technology provider maybe not that much, but for spatial computing for even blockchain. I I, I believe we have done. Like <clears throat> some assessment of blockchain already in our list, but yeah. And then if Web three comes, then yes, we need to be very good at blockchain. And that that is another thing for metaverse that uh, all the companies that are like buying into it, we have to be very careful about security, user privacy, mm. because there are no controls right now. It's very very similar to how cloud was long back. Yeah. Where so that's where companies all the undercurrents yeah some the company have to take care of themselves okay so okay. if if you uh, wanted to get into this if no this wanted to start doing this what kind of skills do you need engineer mindset I would say to learn learn something new and if you talk about technology I would say AI and blockchain those two definitely Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds good. The numbers numbers look exciting. I'm just curious about you know, like about the technology that takes us there. Uh, personally, I you know like uh, uh, I haven't experienced this, so I'm I'm just you know, like basing it on my presumptions. But somehow I don't. Uh, like the idea of wearing that hefty headset <laughs> and uh, just thinking that you know, like I'm in a different world. So, uh, but probably that, just, they, that would change too. Maybe it will become something like a glass. Like I think glasses would be phenomenal. You know, like uh, if you recall, there was uh, there was this Google Glass uh, uh, yeah. concept that uh, uh -huh. uh, Sergey Brin, the Google guy, he was he was working on. So never never really took uh, got uh, got to see the light of the day. Yeah, I think um, they they ran into those concerns like what will happen if user is using it and the liability that it may cause. Like, oh, was that the thing? Okay, it, I thought it that was, they were it was working. Actually. I know one of my friend got it. Like there was some kind of a 
lucky draw or something where you can get those glasses right? I, I, even after paying 600 dollars or something at that time long back like, oh okay maybe, maybe 10 years okay. back, i'm not sure but yeah one of my friend got it too so he, he said like it was a very different experience he was in us that time okay yeah but yeah i think they eventually said that okay just because of many things that they looked at based on the user feedback that beta group they had so they realized okay it will cause more harm you're, you're wearing it and you are like distracted but yes if yeah you think about just sitting somewhere and then you, and again that is where augmented reality comes in right right now actually i am just it's a, just a, a visual right it's more like a screen in front of me that's what google yeah. was but if i can just move around while sitting and even maybe i have a treadmill and i'm walking or i have a <clears throat> exercise cycle and i'm just cycling through it and it will make me feel that okay i'm cycling towards the office so yeah all that is still possible like the, there are technologies we are yeah. still making it possible that's something that they can integrate into metaverse where you you feel that you are still, you are at home but you are actually cycling to <laughs> office and it is it is already yeah so like i've seen uh, many videos yeah, it is, yeah, like, uh, so people yeah, have yeah. actually like started spending like you you see like a day in metaverse or how do how like people have spent like 100 days uh, wearing that uh, vr right and like sitting uh, on their place and then walking through the metaverse and and then experiencing like how does it uh, feels like should you do do that or should you not <laughs> So, yeah yeah that yeah i think uh, maybe it's not my cup of tea right now but yeah never yeah know. Not, yeah not <laughs> now maybe but once it's get popular right maybe everybody starts doing that yeah maybe if we get another big virus variant out <laughs> yeah out of the world <laughs> then i would be frustrated right and then i would probably just <laughs> use anything to have that experience okay.